Hello everyone, welcome back to Excel Mind. Today's video is going to be super practical because it's inspired by a question from one of our subscribers. They have asked us how to automatically send an email using the Google Sheet, whether a certain condition is met, like when a stock level goes above zero, an email should be sent to the particular email ID which is mentioned next to that particular stock. So in this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step how to set up a Google script that monitors your Google feed for changes in the stock level and triggers an email to notify you or someone else on your team. It's a great way to automate notification and keep everyone in a loop without having to manually check the feed all the time. Isn't it great? Right? We have already done this in our previous video. And from there, we have got this query. Let's see which video and from where we got this query and what the query is. So here is the video on which the query and the comment has been raised. So we have previously uploaded this video where we have shown the automation of the Google Sheet, where a particular stock, when it goes below zero, an email get triggered to an default email ID and it gets notified to that email id that this particular stock has went to zero and need a refill but a comment which we have received from one of our viewer is this they want that email should be sent not to the default email id but to the multiple email id and email id has been listed down in one of the columns and the stock is listed next to it and when the stock goes above zero, an email should be sent to that particular email ID, which is next to that stock, right? A good query and interesting one. So in this video, we gonna crack this and we gonna see how we can achieve this. But before we move on, if you have not subscribed to our channel, do subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So that you don't miss out any upcoming videos. Let's not waste the time and hit on the query. As you can see on the screen, we have the dummy email IDs over here, where one is the our original email ID and the stock name, list of stock you can say, stock in hand, which is zero, requirement level, and the reminder email where it will be mentioned that whether the email has been sent or not. So let's try this. We have already written the code behind this. So if we add one over here as and one over here, text has been pop up over here like email has been sent for both this. So let's see whether email has been sent or not. Let's move on to our email ID. So we are on to the sent item and here you go. The first email has been sent to the Excel mind itself. And the another email has been sent to the trial group saying that the stock count for your item is one. Let's see whether it's true or not. If we add over here the file. Now let's see whether the email suits or not. So we go on to the year and here you go. So dummy group ID email has been sent. Stock count for your item is five. So whatever the number you input over here, it will add into the subject line. Now how we have achieved this and what code we have written, let's see. So here is the code. So let's see what we have written. So first we have written the function name, which is the send mail. This is important because while doing the trigger, you should know what the function name is, what function you are triggering it. Then we have added the seed over here. You can just change the seed name according to yours. So here we have our seed as named seed one. So we have added seat one over here if you have named it with something else you can just amend this seat one to that then we have the data range values and last row now let's understand what these three are so the data range represent the entire range of the data in the seat there are lots of data in the seat so it will represent the entire range of data in the seat and the value represent the value within the data range. So within that data range, we are specifying some values, right? So this will, will represent that 
and the last row shows the index of the last row that uh, contains the data in the database, helping determine the extent of the data. That means the till when it should run the script. Okay. Now moving further, we have the sub count, which is equal to value i two. Now the two indicates the index two for the stock count, right? So what is two? The this one. We are skipping this first row. So the first column and the second column. So this is considered as in two, the second column. Okay. So the stock count should be pulled from the this index two. Then email address. You can see its value as an i one. That means the one will be this one. The email should be pulled from this column. Then email sent will be pulled from the fourth. The fourth will be counting from your one, two, three, and four. So you can change this accordingly. Uh, wherever you have added your stock count and where you want to add the email sent trigger, you can change this accordingly. Then we have added the if condition over here. Now, why we have added the if condition? Because we have a criteria, right? Whenever the stock goes above zero, see you can uh, see over here we have added the sign above zero, then email should be sent. Then we have added the subject. You can amend the subject as per your choice. We have added the subject line as stock count is greater than zero. You can see over here on the email. The subject line is mentioned the way we have added over here. You can amend this accordingly, uh, according to your feed. Then the message. The message is a stock count for your count is. Then we have added the plus sign over here. Then that means this line will remain the same. You can see stock count for your item is then the number. The number will be pulled from the stock count section, which is this. Column number two, we have added this here. Then it will trigger whenever anything goes above zero. Then it will trigger the email along with the email address, subject, and message, and it will be sent. Now, once all this has been done, then it will add the text as sent on the e column. So this represents that. Now let's see. Where to add this code and how to activate the trigger to add this script? Okay, you just have to activate the script as shown in our previous video. If you don't know, just check out the video link at the above right hand side of the screen, or you can get the video link from the description section as well. So, once your uh, script has been activated, then you just go to extension and over here, just add the script. You can copy the code from the blog and then just directly paste it. Just delete all this and just paste. Now make sure that the code has been pasted under the editor section and you can just save this project and then hit this run to check the function. Okay. Now uh, once you run this, you will be asked to just allow some permission just uh, give the access and allow the permission and then once you are done with it it will show you as this execution started execution completed that means your code are perfect okay now go to the trigger the fourth option from the left hand side okay you remember what we have given the name it's a send email okay just add trigger from this button now select this send email function from your okay then select event type so change this to on edit okay and no more change required just save it you will be asked to give the access and then you just have to go to the advanced and Go to entitled project or if you have given the name you just click that it's totally safe don't worry about it and allow once you're done it will be added over here See. okay that means uh, nothing else now everything has been done now you can go and test
So what we'll do, we'll just add the number over here. We'll add some 10 and wait for it to trigger. It says that the email has been sent. Now let's move on to the our email and see whether email has been sent. Here you go. The email has been sent and the stock count for your item is 10 and the email has been shifted from the Excel mine to Excel mine because here we have added the email as well. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and if you have a query regarding this code and how to activate if you're facing any difficulties just comment on this video and we will definitely help you out with the code. Apart from this, if you have any query regarding any of our video, you can again comment on our any of the video and we will definitely come out with the, some of the solution and we will resolve it. So that's it for the today's tutorial. I hope uh, we had a good learning from this video. Keep watching Excel Mind.